Hey, welcome everyone. It's time for a Trick Trades video lesson. Okay, today, tonight I want to talk about Juno. Uh, basically, we warned everyone today. Uh, let's take a look at the intraday chart. We said that this was going to most likely have a, a target of 45. It ended up reaching it. Uh, actually blew past that 45 uh, after hours on a, on a really nice short squeeze. I am going to expect some more squeezing tomorrow for, for shorts that are trapped in there overnight. Uh, it could be interesting. Either way, um, let me zoom in on this here. For people that don't know what, what short cover looks like, I mean, this is... So when you see charts with high uh, percentage of the float that's short, that's what this red here on TC2000, I mean, you could look up on uh, uh, shortsqueeze.com. Uh, if your charting program doesn't have it, um, so it's it's and these are all rough because they're they're never bang on. Um, <clears throat> Twenty five percent is, is a huge, huge, huge um, uh, percentage of the short or the float that's short. Uh, th this is basically what short cover looks like. You see these consecutive green candles, this just consistent buying coming in like that. That's that's shorts covering, and then yeah, you're gonna have some chasers hitting it. I actually missed it at uh, at 40. I wanted to take this for a long, and then just basically ride it all day because uh, that's that's basically what <laughs> what was gonna happen with this. Um, so this was a complete complete animal. Uh, we warned people in chat to uh, to stay away. Um, it, it, I I said. Uh, Repeatedly, all this was going to do all day long was just toy with people. All this was going to do was toy with people. And you can see that's what it was doing. It would ramp up. It would look like it's starting to sell off and then trap shorts. And then it would squeeze up. And then it would trap shorts and then squeeze out. Trap shorts, squeeze out. Trap shorts, squeeze out. Trap. Like it, it just over and over and over. And finally, people thought that there was a double top here at uh, this uh, 44 area. And it was looking pretty good and just super, super fakey, right? I didn't like the way this was trading. I got asked in chat uh, what I thought. And I said, if this thing is just going to fucking toy with people, that's all it's going to do. And sure enough, it didn't break down. It ended up climbing back up. And then there we go. That's what happen when, happens when you get super crowded trades. Um, you got really high, high volume. Let's switch back over to the daily chart here. Look at the volume on this. I mean, 18 million, that's this white line here. That's its average. That's way over its average. I mean, that's that's insane. I mean, we've had a few, only a few days with that type of uh, that type of uh, volume, and they've always been on big sell days. So, <clears throat> now, tomorrow, I'm going to expect some more some more short squeeze. I mean, this so very easily could hit 50. I'm not saying it's going to. That's not my price target on it. But um, it just, just keep that in mind. That we're going to have to wait and see what type of crazy move we're going to get. But here's the thing, guys. A lot of people don't realize this, and I say this in chat all the time. Short squeezes create fake buying. Okay, so let me explain that. I'll go back to the intraday. So when you have real buying, like right in, like uh, basically the opposite of this, this is all shorts covering, right? When you have real buying with people that are actually buying the stock and not just covering their shorts, because when you cover a short, it, I mean, you're, you're buying to cover, right? So you are buying, but it basically creates uh, artificial buying pressure and artificial support. There's no real support. There aren't buyers in there wanting to hold that stock up at a certain level. Those are just shorts covering. So the buying's done, right? So what's going to happen tomorrow? And uh, whenever this decides to top out. Now, short squeezes can continue to go on, especially when you see this, this 25%. This can continue. This thing can get really fucking stupid. Like, an example of that is REN. One second. Can you see this? Way back last year around this time. 
I, I, I remember playing this uh, Ren when it was uh, in it in the threes here, right? Like after the first uh, um, uh, reverse split, and then it got short squeezed. Like this is all from from a squeeze, right? That's where you catch these moves on these cheap tickers. They're they're generally just short squeezes. They're not really people buying the fucking things, right? So, <clears throat> um, and this is all short squeeze. See all this big these can say this was a nice big short squeeze. So this is what can happen on a crazy short squeeze. It finally reaches a point where. It gets to a price, especially the $20 area. Now, the $20 price of any stock, that's basically, that's where it becomes a, a big boy stock, a real stock. That's when professional traders will really start looking at a stock, right? So, um, so then it just becomes played. Like this, this starts getting traded on a daily basis, and you can see its average volume is pretty low, but... Um, it starts getting traded at a regular basis. This thing tapped out at 50. Like that's, that's insane. This, this came from a 50 cent stock. This was a 50 cent stock basically. Okay. And then it reverse split and then it just started squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Right. And then this is just starting to get traded. Like people were, excuse me, like I said, watching these, uh, 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 because uh, stocks over over ten dollars, they'll generally follow the rules of trading. Uh, because you have professional traders trading them, and you, that's I mean that's why I trade them. I, I don't trade. I try and stay away from cheap stocks unless I'm going to be shorting them down. Um, so this this is just an example of uh, what can happen in a short squeeze. Now Juno, here's the thing, guys. People wanting to fucking short these goddamn things. Because they're up, okay? There's, there's a certain chat room out there that that's what they do. They just short anything that moves. And, yeah, there's a lot of good traders in that room. But Jesus Christ, guys. I mean, just because something's up on the day doesn't mean it's a short. Yesterday, yesterday, this was clearly not to be fucked with. And we even said that in chat because I started shorting it down. Because usually with big gap ups, you're, you're going to get something that... Um, you're going to get that profit taking wash and then you got that profit taking wash in the morning you can see the dip here and then it just fucked with people all day so i said that in chat yesterday it's like no just leave juno alone let's see what happens tomorrow so tomorrow came which is today and then we got this massive fucking short squeeze so we said leave it alone let's see what happens like guys there's no just because a stock is in play everyone wants to jump on it like uh i don't know fuck man like Use whatever analogy you want. It's ridiculous. Like people need to stop doing that. Uh, if you go, if you go on Twitter, it's it's hilarious the amount of people that took losses on this. It's like why? Why would you take a loss on this when you could have rolled that short squeeze up? Now it's a shame um, that I I wanted to ride this squeeze. I just I just missed it at at forty. And who knows? I, I mean, who could have known that it was going to go to uh, the price it went to, right? So, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm not going to buy the dips on these because it can just wash out at any time because, like I said, with short squeezes, it creates artificial buying uh, support and it's not really there. So, it can really dump out on you, right? But um, uh, that being said, um, it, like, I don't know. It, people are hilarious. Uh, that's why I find Twitterverse the, <laughs> the funniest place in the world. People idolize the wrong fucking people. Um, so tomorrow, basically what, what the plan is for Juno is we're going to see where it opens up because I don't know what the fuck it's going to do pre-market. Uh, you're probably going to see some shorts looking at this as, oh shit, because there, there were shorts starting in at this in like the mid thirties and they're still in it. And all they do, their, their fucking strategies, add, 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 oh shit, cover. Right, like that's that's not a strategy. That's holding and hoping. <laughs> Stop idolizing those fucking retards. I don't want to get off in a rant here. Um, so what we're gonna do tomorrow is we're gonna we're gonna watch. Uh, we're gonna watch where this opens up. We're gonna see what the price act price action is, king guys. That's it. 
fucking just price action. You don't need these stupid fucking indicators on your charts like stochastics and and fucking slow stochastics, fast stochastics, MACDs, fucking hopped up RSI indicators that you paid two grand for from some other asshole chat room. You don't you don't need all that stuff, okay? Just judge the price action. That's it. You can see on this chart, all I really have is the is the VWAP. These these indicators, I can take or leave them. They 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 all I use them for is guides at different times. Like the 50 I use for big dips. Uh, the 20, I'm looking for that breakdown. I'm looking for it to ride the 9 EMA here uh, to a, for a long. Like it, I, and I don't, I still won't like cover or sell or buy because it hits any of these. It, it doesn't matter. They're just guides. That's it. I could take them off the fucking chart at any time. It don't matter to me, man. But VWAP is important. So, um, so anyways, we're going to watch this. And we're going to see what happens. And right now we're going to mark some levels here on the chart. And we're just, we're going to see, we're going to see what happens. Okay. Um, if it, if it breaks this level here tomorrow, it's going to squeeze out again. Uh, so I, I'm really thinking that this is going to squeeze some more. Cause like I pointed out with REN, uh, it, it, it happens. And I mean, people wanting to short Juno just because it was up is ridiculous it's ridiculous i mean i made some really good money on juno yesterday short but just taking that that initial uh pullback and like that's it i i wasn't gonna get into a pissing match with it these people that want to get into pissing matches with fucking animals like this is an animal you want to get into a fucking fist fight with a gorilla do you fucking stupid so Let's watch this tomorrow and see what happens. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if this fucking tops out at 50 and then finally fails. And when it fails, it's going to be beautiful because it's going to come crash and fucking down. So I'm really hoping that this gets fucking really parabolic and another short squeeze and I can get short into 50. So that's kind of the plan on that. So anyways, guys, I, I hope you learned something here. Don't get into fist fights with gorillas. Okay. In the jungle. This is their turf. <laughs> just fucking leave them alone, man. Just leave them alone. Watch them from a distance, right? Watch and 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 track their movements from a distance. But like that's about it. Don't be in fucking fist fights with fucking gorillas. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy that everyone snickers at behind their fucking back because it's fucking exactly what's going on. So, anyways, guys, have a good night, and I will uh, I will see you later.